Welcome back to the channel everyone. This is our family's boat shop. My name is Joe Buskins and this is our YouTube channel Fish Pump TV. We got a really cool episode today. So the last several weeks we've actually been super busy in our charter season but prior to that we had rapid fired a whole bunch of DIY how-to fiberglass content and today I thought I would consolidate all of that down into one video and highlight some of my favorite content. So my cameraman is gonna follow me. I figure first and foremost, talking about resin is kind of one of those things that a lot of people are curious about when they're trying to decide what they're gonna to use to fix their boat. And I thought I would show some samples. Now each one of these tables is basically, we have a video that we go into full detail, but today I'm just rapid fire. I'm gonna to try to give you guys like a ton of DIY, useful tips, tricks, techniques that you guys can use to repair your boats. So what we've got is all your basic resins. We got your DCPD blend, which is an ortho phthalic. We got your standard ortho polyester laminating resin, which means it stays sticky. I really like the ISO tooling polyester, which is also um, one of my, the resin that we use to build our 29 there in the background. And then one of the coolest resins we got in the bunch is this vinyl ester laminating resin that ties a lot of the qualities, water blocking ability that epoxy has, but you can gel coat over vinyl ester with no problem. And then you've got your epoxy resin and the catalyst for it. Now the order we have these in, one of the most common questions we have or things that there's maybe some dispute about is when can you put epoxy over polyester and which ones are compatible. All of the polyesters and vinyl esters are compatible with one another. You can put epoxy over the top of vinyl esters and polyesters, but not vice versa. So if you've got a fiberglass hull boat and you wanna put an epoxy barrier coat on it, that's totally fine. Or if you've done repair with a polyester or vinyl ester and you wanna use epoxy to seal it, but if you use an epoxy putty for the repair, you don't wanna put polyester resins or gel coats back over the top of that. Now talking about epoxies, if you've never used any of the West Systems 610, this is in one of our videos where we're talking about putties and fillers. If you have a boat, you need some of this stuff. It has a really cool little cartridge that mixes the material in the tip and as you squeeze this out, the two components mix in the tip and it is amazing for filling screw holes or gluing and bonding things together. Now, as we circle around over here on the back side, guys are always asking me questions about gel coat. And you know, guys notice we have found an excellent source for you DIY guys. Fiberglass Warehouse will help you out if you're looking for any of these resins or gel coats. But you've got white gel coat with wax. Now, guys over in uh, Australia or the UK or overseas are gonna refer to what we call gel coat with wax, you guys are gonna refer to as flow coat. But basically, when we're doing a repair job, we may do two or three coats of gel coat, just plain gel coat, no wax added. And then on the last coat, you would want gel coat with wax. Now, one thing you guys, can do is you can buy a solution. It's called sanding aid or modifier C or wax additive. And if you just buy the gel coat without wax on the very last coat, say if you were doing three coats of interior gel coat, like we did on a little skiff that we did the interior in like a light gray, you would do the first coats without wax and then you add I usually go a little heavy, about a 3% solution to me. So pretty good capful of this, sometimes even two capfuls per, per quart of gel coat is gonna be the solution there. So that is the answer to the difference between wax and no wax. Wax on the last coat only, guys. We also, if you're wanting to thin your gel coat, this is gonna be the solution. Styrene monomer. No more than about 5% typically by volume. Any more than that and you can affect the color outcome of the gel coat. I don't recommend ever using acetone, guys. Sometimes people say acetone for thinning gel coat, but styrene is the correct. And this channel is all about trying to give you guys correct information. This is what we do professionally. Grew up in a boat shop. We've done thousands of repair jobs. And these are materials that I know are gonna work. Now, as far as catalyzing your gel coat, 
you're going to be using the norox mekp 925 that typically is going to be added by volume in a one to two percent per volume of your gel coat and a roundabout number would be if you've got about a quart of gel coat or 32 ounces you're going to need about 10 to 12 cc's of your mekp or if you have one ounce of gel coat it'd be 10 to 12 drops of that now if you're using resin and you want to be able to see if your material is mixed well you can actually add a red dye there's a dye additive that can go in your mekp and it will turn it red and you can see we've got two different dispensers here which if you guys are doing fiberglass work these are going to be available in the links down below this video you can get all of this stuff but you've got your cc's measured out in milliliters and that way you guys will know exactly how much catalyst you should add when you guys are mixing now when you're getting ready to apply this kind of stuff guys we use an awful lot of just good old plain chip brushes these are disposable um, you're going to burn some brushes up and it's best to just buy something disposable and the rollers of choice we like to use a 3 8 nap and these are the nine inch but a lot of times for smaller jobs and i see guys all the time on youtube using brushes for fairly large jobs i don't know why you would do that unless it was a tiny tiny job we'll use a brush to mix the resin we use a roller and here's a little trick we use we'll wrap it in tape and can you guys see all the loose hairs that are coming off of that you can take a fairly inexpensive roller and turn it into a fairly high quality roller just with that little trick now when you're laminating fiberglass this is another roller you're going to use called a fin roller or a bubble buster and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute and again we've got videos matter of fact here are two of our sample pieces this is done with epoxy this is done in polyester and polyester body fillers and if you guys want to learn how to epoxy or fiberglass over uh, plywood there are two dedicated videos talking all about this topic but these are tools you're going to need in your kit if you guys are going to be building a boat now you guys may have noticed this panel that we got over here if you're doing some gel coat repair there's a product that 3m makes called a dry guide coat that is your friend right there got a little applicator you can apply this to your surface and it'll show and highlight any imperfections you guys can see where the scratches are highlighted and when you're getting to ready to wet sand that it'll show you when you've sanded enough the dry guide coat will disappear and you can move on to the next phase of sanding another product that we use on the boat in the boat shop all the time and if you're new to diy or own a boat 4200 and 5200 these are staples in the marine world 5200 you can glue plywood together if something's this is a permanent bond 4200 is a semi permanent bond it can be removed this is what we use like when we're putting outboard motors on a lot of times or through hole fittings 5200 is very very permanent now in fact 4200 and 5200 are so permanent that if you ever have to take something loose that they've that's been bonded with it it's crazy strong this is the solution right there debond you can spray this it's a very thin almost like a uh, acetone or like lacquer thinner type material let it soak for some time and it will actually break the bond of 4200 and 5200 also silicone on basically any kind of sealant you're trying to get some sealant off of something that right there will save you hours and hours <laughs> of, of, of aggravation i'm not even kidding so guys we're going to jump over now super super quick we're going to skim through a dozen of my favorite power tools and again we've got a video talking about this if you're replacing a floor or stringer a good circular skill saw if you're taking something apart or you're trying to cut like something into a dash like for new stereo or electronics a little oscillating multi-tool when we're rounding corners and edges a small router they call this like a laminate trimmer or a palm router these things are awesome for putting a beautiful radius right on edges that you're going to fiberglass a good basic a 3 8 drill and that's got a little chamfer bit in it for countersinking materials 
Number one tool for taking a boat apart, right there, guys, a Sawzall with a long blade, cut out floors, you can take out stringer systems like a champ. I love a saber saw or a jigsaw for cutting out intricate shapes and parts, and you're gonna want a bimetal blade on that. We use little heat guns all the time for drying out wood or accelerating the cure on materials. Uh, heat guns are gonna be your friend. They're also great for like removing decals off of things. Couple little air tools, little rotary grinder there for tight spots and a carbide burr. You're gonna need each of those. Probably one of the number one tools in a boat builder's arsenal or if you're rebuilding a boat is a, a grinder with a very aggressive sanding disc. This will remove material at a rapid pace. You're going to want a good vacuum to catch all the dust that this guy is going to make. And this Bosch grinder right here is a variable speed. It can act as a buffer or we got a soft pad on it. Very good for material removal at a high rate. Now I know a lot of you guys may be doing floors, stringers, transoms. Transoms are something that happen and go bad all the time. We have a video showing you guys how to use and make your own transom clamps. You'll notice here we got a small, a medium, and a large. Most V-shaped boats, V-hull boats, you're going to need one long clamp for in the middle, two mediums, and two smalls. And what we're using Maybe my cameraman can zoom in right there. That is called a T nut and a 3 8 bolt. And those are pretty long. Those are like nine inches, but you can go with all thread. And basically these would go on the inside of the boat and you can just run these bolts through and tighten them, uh, tighten your core or squeeze your core back into your original hull laminate and there's a video on that detailing that in more detail. So I'm rapid fire, guys. I'm trying to run this video as fast as possible and fill it full of good information for you guys. Um, when it comes to cleanup, good old acetone is our material of choice. Hard to beat acetone. And when you're working with acetone, you're gonna want to be using some good gloves. Um, honestly, what we're looking at here is a nitrile that is probably going to be your better bet for chemical resistance a lot of folks will use just plain old latex for light duty stuff now one thing that a lot of folks recommend and again if you're new to fiberglass and you're diy is instead of just one pair you're gonna go with two pairs every time you start to work and what that does is it gives you double protection and then when you do get some fiberglass on your hands or some putty on your hands, it's gonna happen. And you need to answer your cell phone or you need to take, check the cordless drill. You can grab one pair and peel it off rapidly and you've got clean hands to work with. You guys are also gonna need a good respirator. This is made by 3M and I find that almost anything 3M makes is very good. This one allows you to speak, it has a better mechanism in there so that you can hear a little bit better but that one is the ticket some good ear protection an assortment of flexible spreader blades and putty blades a nice little mixer for mixing up putties and fillers and an assortment of measuring cups a lot of this stuff here guys you're going to want graduated mixing cups so that you can meter this stuff out you want to be fairly precise with it most of this stuff needs to be mixed at a certain ratio. Now, most of your fiberglass suppliers will also provide what is called a popcorn cup. That is a little disposable waxed mixing cup, and we use tons of these things, and you guys will too. I'd recommend getting a few of those in the shop. Now, if you're doing any gel coat restoration or polishing, like if you're doing some gel coat repair and you're trying to buff that out, 3M, make some excellent products they have actually superseded this now but you should be able to we'll put a link to the correct material the replacement down below and out of all the waxes and materials we've used here in the shop we use it on my boat we use it on all the repairs the fleet wax is an amazing product every shop job should also have some markers and a razor knife 
All right, guys, come on down the line. We're going to be bouncing around a little bit. You guys, if you're doing epoxy work, you're going to need some of the West Systems fillers. We've got a video detailing what all of these do and what kind of product that results from them. A couple of my favorites would be the colloidal silica and I like the microfibers. That's really good for what we call making an epoxy peanut butter. Now, if you guys are doing any gel coat work, and again, we've got videos. Matter of fact, we've got a video detailing when we did the gel coat and non-skid. There's a company called US Paints. They make a product called All Grip and they make Grip Tex. And we typically use the coarse and the extra coarse in equal volumes. And there is a dedicated video here on the channel where we are mixing this into gel coat and applying it. But that is my non-skid material of choice. Anybody that has a boat or a household probably needs to have some of this five minute epoxy from West Systems and the G-Flex, which is crazy strong, takes longer to cure, but very, very durable, very, very tough, great products love to use them now guys gel coat repair is another common thing we recently did a video where we opened up a gel coat mix and match kit these are great to have around the shop i think they're worth the money because if you went and bought all the pigments and materials in it it would cost way more than the kit does and as far as fillers of choice i really like the 3m marine the high strength it is a vinyl ester which means you can use it below the bottom bottom the water line <laughs> if you want to you've also guys on the channel when we were building our 29 we used a lot of the napa pro strand above the water line but it may be hard for you guys to find and i found that this evercoat everglass is a fantastic material for just all around bonding and uh overall strength when you're working with your boat now come over here guys we are in the home i feel like we are in the home stretch i think we are um what we want to talk about very briefly are materials as far as fiberglass materials and how to use them now one of my very favorites is the 1708 biaxial uh, that has a fiberglass a 45 degree weave on top and it's got like what we call csm or chop strand mat on the bottom and this is stitched together. So what I like about this, it is totally compatible and works beautifully with polyester, vinyl ester, and epoxy resins. This stuff is um, great stuff. It's what we actually built our 29 out of. When we were laminating the hull, we alternated it with the 1808. So very similar weight. It's both got the CSM on the backside, but this is in a 45 degree weave. The 1808 is in a 90 degree. Now, there is an orientation to this material. When you're using a 1708, the CSM or the mat side should go down. And if you want to laminate this, you could put a layer of 1708. You could put a layer of the 1808. You could put a la layer of the 1708 and continue to stack those and it would work out beautifully. At the end of your laminate schedule, if you wanted something with a nicer cosmetic, medic, you could use just some straight CSM. I don't recommend using this typically with epoxy. Um, you can in certain situations, but epoxy is not does not have styrene in it as a solvent, and it will not melt and make the, the CSM conform like polyester and vinyl ester resins will. So I typically recommend using CSM with vinyl ester and polyester, not so much with epoxy, although it can be done. What I do recommend with epoxy is a finishing cloth. This is like a six ounce finishing cloth. It's woven together. It will bend and conform and it gives you a very nice cosmetic finish. But the way things work, you can stack the 1708 on itself you can also do one layer. You could do a layer of 1808 and 1708, although there's no reason for that because that has the mat underneath. You can also stack layers of mat one on another, no problem. Now, this is where sometimes there's some confusion and you guys hang with me. I'm trying really hard to hustle through this stuff. 
This is your 18 ounce, what's called woven roving. I don't ever recommend starting your fiberglassing sequence. Say if you were fiberglassing this piece of wood here, I would never start with the roving and then add more layers of the woven roving. You would start with a layer of the CSM mat. I kind of like the one ounce. They make it three quarter, one and one and a half, but I find the one ounce is a nice balance between thickness and workability. You would wet this wood out. And generally, matter of fact, on our How to Fiberglass Over Plywood video, we always recommend radius in the edges and the corners and putting a nice fillet or radius. Matter of fact, you can see I've modified a drywall knife and you can see I've got one size radius on that corner, that one slightly sharper, that one slightly fuller. You would basically apply some putty in that corner and then turn your blade and you would draw it out and that would leave a beautiful radius just like that in the corner. You would do that and let that cure prior to fiberglassing. But then once you got ready to laminate, you would put down your, your CSM mat, you'd put down a layer of the woven roving, you would put down another layer of the mat, and so on and so forth. Now typically, we always start and finish with the CSM mat in our family shop because the mat holds a lot of resin, it bonds really well to the surface of your material, but it also produces a really nice cosmetic finish. Now you could do the same if you were working with 1708. You could have a 1708. You could do several layers of that. And if you wanted to, you could finish out with some CSM. Now one thing with the CSM that is different than most all the other materials is typically when we are working with woven roving, it is hard to beat a, just a good pair of heavy duty scissors or shears. These will do quick work on that. But when you are working with the mat, we have a nice cutting table here and we'll use a straight edge. And you can just reach across there and tear it across that straight edge. And then as you need pieces, I almost always, unless you're finishing on a sharp edge, we will have it feathered out it gives you a much nicer transition when you're finishing up your materials. Now, one thing we didn't touch on a little bit, <laughs> going back, I know I'm moving around a lot, guys. Got a sample piece of epoxy that we've just clear coated some marine plywood with epoxy. It will produce an amine blush, and if you're gonna be fiberglassing over that, the way to remove the amine blush would be with some water and a Scotch-Brite a Scotch -Brite pad to scuff it up is gonna be the trick to removing that amine blush. And then rinse it off and you can even dry it with a heat gun. Now, normally that sounds really crazy to put water on something, but again, we got a video on that and that is the recommended way to remove amine blush. As far as cores that we like to use in our shop, three quarter marine plywood and three quarter kusa and we use a lot of the blue water 26. again that is what we used exclusively in the construction of our big 29 footer over there but a lot of folks are using marine plywood our family has for years as well done properly it can last you a very long time we actually have some videos where we're strength testing these materials to failure they both have pros and cons you just got to figure out what is best for you <laughs> that's a lot of stuff guys i hope i covered everything i may have missed something i was going to try to keep this video short and i'm afraid i may have ran a little longer than i was going to but um i hope you guys enjoyed it i appreciate you guys so much watching the channel commenting if you want to help us grow the likes the shares all that stuff really, really helps us. It's Captain Joe here with Island Marine Charters, Fish Bump TV here on YouTube, my fantastic cameraman working hard there behind the scenes. And as always, we will catch you guys next time out.